Hello everyone. In this video we are going to discuss the exact analytical solution of a linear ODE uh, in the state space because we will need that also for subsequent uh, discussions, for example, on system properties like observability and of course if we want to calculate the system response for a linear equation as we have already seen in, in the autonomous equation without any inputs we can do this in an analytical closed form which is very nice because it's it's handy it's fast it's exact and now in this video we're basically going to extend our analytical solution with the matrix exponential uh, approach for the autonomous linear state space model towards the state space model with inputs and outputs. In order to do that, we basically utilize a classical approach from the differential calculus where we basically come up with an ansatz equation x of t is equal to h of t, the homogeneous solution, plus xp of t, the particular solution. The homogeneous solution we basically have already considered, so that is this part here, so this is xh, the homogeneous solution, because the homogeneous solution is identical to the solution of the ODE without any inputs, so for u of t being actually zero, and if that is zero, then of course the homogeneous solution of x of t is just the solution which we have already considered. So therefore what we basically need to calculate, so x of t, uh, x, 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 h of t have been already uh, found and what we need to find now is basically this x p of t, the particular solution. In order to find that we will make a very classical approach here which is the variation of parameters or also known as variation of constants approach which is x p of t is identical to e a t, so the matrix exponential, which we already know, times v of t, an unknown function v of t, which we are going to find out next, or which we are going to calculate on the subsequent equations. With this uh, particular approach, we can basically again throw this into our ODE with inputs. So what we get is x dot t of t is identical to v dot times e, sorry that's the wrong uh, sequence, of course that would not work, so e a times t and then v dot, so this would work out, plus a times e a t times v of t. So if we have a closer look, this here is actually our xp of t, so our ansatz equation. So basically this is a times x of p. So this part here is basically identical to this part in our ODE and therefore we know that this part, this EAT times V dot of T must be identical to this part, to B times UT. Right, so this must be b times ut. And we can utilize this finding to basically solve for the unknown v dot of t, which we have not further characterized in this equation. And so we can solve basically for v dot so I'm continuing here with blue, yeah, let's continue with blue, it's not so bad. V dot of t is identical to e to the power of minus a times t times b t 
times u of t, right? Um, and of course, this is a differential equation, so with v dot of t, so basically in order to solve that, we can just apply an integral to both hand sides. So we can integrate this side, we can integrate this side, and as a boundary condition, we consider v of zero being zero, so the initial condition is considered to be zero, and the motivation to do that is basically that the initial condition of the ODE, of the entire ODE, is already part of the homogeneous solution. And since we have already considered the initial response or the initial uh, input here, we do not need to consider it again with this variation of parameters uh, approach V and can therefore set the initial condition to zero. So we therefore need to solve this integral and what we basically get from that is v of t is equal to zero t integral of e minus a tau times b times u tau t tau, right? So that is basically just this integral rewritten considering here that we want to integrate uh, over tau from time zero towards time t. So we have therefore solved vt and we can then integrate vt again here in our equation. So here, right, so we need vt here as a solution. And what we get from that is xp, so our particular solution is identical to the integral from 0 to t e to the power of, so now we can here uh, insert a t into this integral because it's independent from the integration over tau. So what we get from this is uh, a t minus tau times b times u of tau Detail. So this is our particular solution. And then we basically just need to set everything together. We have our homogeneous solution, xh. We now have our particular solution, xp. And therefore, we have now our total solution, x of t. So the time response is e a t times x zero plus the integral zero t e to the power of a t minus tau times b times u of tau d tau. And that is basically uh, a linear combination of the initial response so the response of the system due to the initial state of the system and an additive term of the so-called forced response So the system reaction due to the input u of tau from the outside, right? So if we would set u of tau to zero for the entire time between zero and t, this entire part would basically vanish and we would just get the initial response. Or vice versa, if we would consider that the initial state is zero, we would only get the forced response. However, this just solves x of t, so our state, but of course formally, we also need to consider that we have actually a measurement y of t, so the observables which we can basically measure at the outside of the system, which is then just an insertion of this solution into our measurement equation, which is c times x of t plus d times u of t, right? So we basically set this here for x of t. 
And this is, of course, just a simple insertion because the measurement equation, as we can see here, is just an algebraic equation, so we just need to insert it here and do not need to calculate something further. So basically the main outcome is that for the linear equation, linear ODE with inputs, we can again calculate a closed form solution, which is very handy because we do not need to apply any numerics here. We can basically calculate that by pen and paper, which is normally much faster than a numerical solution. This is normally not possible or only possible for some uh, nonlinear systems as a special case, but here for linear systems, we can utilize this as a cooking recipe in order to solve any linear system in this fashion. And with this, we will then also analyze some system dynamic para, uh, characteristics in the subsequent videos. And until there, I thank you for listening.